Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, I'll be breaking into the five worst mistakes that any new or even sometimes experienced players can make when it comes to making profits with businesses in Grand Theft Auto Online. As always, if you enjoy a video like this and you'd like to see more content, please do consider smashing that subscribe button down below. 80% of the people that watch my content are not currently subscribed, and it does mean a lot. But with that aside, let's get into number one. And that is the location of your business. For example, if we take a look at bunkers, the closer we get to the city, the more expensive they're going to get. 2.1 million, 2 million dollars, 1.9, this one's 2.3 million. But obviously, if we go further away from the city, it's gonna be 1.45 million for that bunker. 1.7 million, and heck, this bunker all the way up at the top of Polito Bay is free. It comes with a criminal enterprise starter pack. And even if it's not free, when you buy it, it is indeed the cheapest bunker, but it features a lot of problems. First of all, when you're selling, it's to the city. So if you have any sale missions that involve two or three vehicles, you gotta drive all the way down the highway to make your way into the city. Obviously, this is the least optimal map route ever, and not only are you wasting time, but you're essentially losing out on profits because of how long it takes you to do deliveries. Same for the exports with excess weapons parts. Good luck doing that with the bunker all the way in the back of the map. Spending some extra cash on, for example, the farmhouse bunker or the Thompson scrapyard bunker, any of the bunkers in Sandy Shore, is a much, much better investment. It's only a couple hundred thousand extra, at most a million extra. And for that extra price tag, you are going to be making double the money just because of how much closer the location is. And the bunker is just the tip of the iceberg when location matters. For example, we have arcades. Now, there are two arcades that are much cheaper than the rest. You have one in Grapeseed for 1.5 mil and one in Polito Bay for 1.2 mil. That is way cheaper than the arcades, you know, in the city for $2 million or 2.5 mil. The one I think I own is like 2.6 or 2.7. But the reason owning an arcade in the city is much more profitable is because it features the term Terminal Command Center, which allows you to restock all of your businesses. You can also start up the heist inside of it. It has a garage. It is much more important to be able to enter your bunker and restock all of your businesses from the command center in the city than having to go all the way to the other side of the map and then all the way back when you just want to simply restock businesses. And there's obviously a lot of properties like this in the game. You never want to buy this nightclub all the way in the corner of the map because it's so far away from the rest of your properties. Buy one that's a bit more expensive, sure. It might cost you to get all these better properties, an extra two or three million dollars in total. But when you add up all of the amount of money that you're going to be getting in saving time, it is 100% worth it to buy better properties. Next on the list, we have buying small and medium warehouses. Why is this a bad decision compared to buying large warehouses? Well, it's very simple. A large warehouse can store 111 crates, where a small can store 16, and I think a medium can have like 40. And the thing about warehouses is the more crates you store, the more money they're worth. It's not just that you have a lot of crates available, so you sell them for a mass sum. The more crates you actually have, they gain interest, which means that if you have a warehouse filled with 111 crates, you will make more money than selling 111 crates with solo sale missions with a medium or small warehouse. Because of that, it is always much more profitable to just save up and buy a large warehouse because you will make more money with them. That is also the same case when it comes to Lupe and her assistants. The amount of money hourly you can earn by walking over to Lupe's assistants and paying them to source you crates is drastically decreased the smaller a warehouse you have. Because you're spending $7,500 for them to source crates that aren't going to accrue nearly as much in total value due to, as I said, them not gaining as many crates in the warehouse as themselves. So essentially, buy large warehouses. Small ones are okay if you're a new player starting off, but for the most part, you're 
really want to stick to large warehouses. The third worst thing you can do when it comes to businesses is assigning the wrong warehouse technicians on your nightclub. In front of you, we can see a chart of all the ways that you can make money with the nightclub. The first thing we have is swapping DJs so you can get your profit per hour. But then we have cargo and shipments, sporting goods, South American imports, pharmaceutical research, cash creation, organic produce, printing, and copying. These are all the things that you can assign your warehouse technicians to. As we can see, the ones that you want to assign them to are obviously going to be the highest hourly profit. So first we have South American imports, then we have pharmaceutical research, then cash creation, then we have cargo and shipments, and to finish off, sporting's goods. Those are the ones that you should have all of your technicians signed to. If you don't, then you're going to be making a lot less money. If you have printing and copying and organic produce instead of South American imports and pharmaceutical research, you're literally having the amount of money you could be making. So make sure you assign the correct technicians. Next up, we arrive to a mistake that even a lot of skilled players make, and that is sourcing instead of buying. When we make our way over to gun running supplies, you can see I currently have no product whatsoever, and I have the opportunity to either steal the supplies or buy them for $75,000. Now, if you're smart, you'll buy them, because first of all, when stealing supplies, it will never max out the stock level, which means that you might have to steal two or three separate missions just to get that stock level maxed. When I could just spend $75,000, forget about it, and come check back on the business when it has filled up later. This is absolutely mandatory if you want to make money with any passive business. When it comes to the nightclub, when it comes to the acid lab, when it comes to the motorcycle club businesses. And finally, we arrive to the final thing you should never, ever do when it comes to a business, and that is source random supplies or pay Rooster Macraw to source them for you. I can speak to Rooster Macraw and spend $25,000 for him to go source me a random crate. Now, he has a 30% chance to give me two crates and a 75% chance to get me one crate. The problem with his sourcing is that he is giving me completely random crates. For any of you that are unaware, the way the hangar cargo works is the more of one specific crate you source, the more money you're going to make. And that is because you're going to get like a massive 75% bonus when you have all 50 of one crate. Because of that, it is always much more beneficial to source them yourself. Don't do source any type because that's absolutely stupid. You shouldn't be sourcing narcotics, chemicals, or medical supplies, and you should not be using Rooster Macraw. Unless you have literally zero plans to ever source these yourself and you just want to have him running in the background, I would highly recommend just to source them using this method because it's way better. Either way, that is today's video on all of the things you should not do with businesses. There are more things out there, and if you'd like to hear those, please let me know in the comments down below because I'll make a version 2 of this video talking about some of the other ways that you're losing money and you shouldn't be, you know, wasting your time on certain businesses and things like that. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!